Well, welcome to the Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware. This is Stephen Taylor, director of our rental division and our special projects division. Now, Pyroflame has so graciously given us a burner here at the Boiler University, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk about this force draft burner with Stephen, kind of telling us how this thing really works. Yep. Go. This is a uh, this particular burner is straight gas. They they produce them in straight gas and and oil as well. Uh, this burner could be converted to uh, oil, but the front of the burner, this one, pretty simple. It's on-off control modulation. You can go manual modulation to, to set the firing rate or uh, send it in auto and, and let the controls do them, themselves. Uh, just a standard Honeywell um, RM7800 control, all the electrical switch gear inside for the for the controls themselves. And what, what's the 7800 control actually doing? That's, that's the brain of the entire system. So it's controlling uh, air, fuel, um, it's, it's monitoring all the, the um, limit switches to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be before it let that burner fire. Okay. So it's gonna check and make sure your gas valves are closed. It's gonna check and make sure you don't have air when you're not supposed to have it, you have air when you're supposed to. It does all of those things before it lets it fire and then it monitors all of that while it's firing mm -hmm. to make sure you don't drop a gas valve, you don't drop an air, you know, if, if you drop the blower motor and it's sitting there firing, and you, you don't have any air, you're gonna create a, an, an issue in the chamber itself. Mm -hmm. Well, this is monitoring air, so if you drop that air out or if the, the uh, contacts drop out on the, on the blower motor, it automatically shuts things down and sends an alarm out. So really the, the brain. <clears> it is the brain it, of it the system. It is the brain of the system. It now, is. you mentioned something about modulation, and that is a, a word that you hear a lot in the industry. Why don't you talk about what that is? That, that's where it's, it's like your gas pedal on your car. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. It's no different than having a tractor that you either have it running you know, full speed or you have it running at idle speed. Okay. Uh, where this is more like a car that you, you, you run your throttle up and down, that's what this is. You can, and you can do this manually like you would your car or unlike your car, well, like your car in, um, in, in cruise control, mm -hmm. you put it in auto and then the controls themselves take over and they keep it performing at whatever the requirements are. Now, are there burners that are just on off? There are burners that are on off, okay. there are burners that are staged. Okay. You light them off on low fire and then they'll go to mid range or high fire, come back down and then shut themselves off. Where this one modulates up and down just like your gas pedal on your car. Okay, all right. Let's keep moving here on the burner, slide around the side. So, so right. these are the other controls that actually control the firing rate. This is the modulation motor and through linkages, it's hooked to these dampers. There's a damper here and a damper here. This is your fresh air makeup. So this is the makeup air that's going into the blower mm -hmm. that's being forced through here to, to mix with the, the gas. This is the natural gas itself. You see this butterfly here? That's what's, when, when this modulation arm moves, it opens these dampers up at the same time, it opens this butterfly valve up, and this combination sequence is set up during the initial commissioning of the burner. Then these are adjusted and set to where the, the firing rate is equal and you have a, a good combustion from low to high fire. Which these were pre-servo <laughs> motors. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the, the typical stuff that you saw 10 years ago on everybody's burner. Everybody's going away from it now, but there's still a lot of people that, that you know, they like to tinker and like to have the linkages there. And, and it's still the, the, a lot of burners go on with that in place. Which a lot less expensive. Obviously. A lot less expensive, yeah. 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 Okay, and on this side of the burner. So on this side, you've got your, your pilot assembly here, pilot valve, pilot regulator. There's where the pilot line goes into the uh, assembly there. Mm -hmm. uh, air switch, we have an air proving switch so that the blower starts up. This switch has to make before that brain in there will let the thing fire. For okay. to open the gas valves up, this has to be made. Okay. And then this is the scanner. So all mm -hmm. the time the thing is burning, we have an electronic eye looking at that flame and there's a signal that comes back and if it's you know, two to five volts DC or whatever the parameter is, that has to stay in that range in order for that brain, that, that, that uh, RM7800 to get keep the unit operating. Okay. If that drops off, goes too high, then we have a runaway scanner. If it drops too low, we've lost our signal, something's wrong with the flame, it'll shut down, send an alarm out. There's okay. more safeties built into the system. All right. and ignition, transformer. ignition transformer, when you light this thing off, you gotta have an electric spark somewhere, mm -hmm. and it's no different than electric spark on your grill. That's what that is, just a whole lot more powerful. Does the same thing. So when this thing starts up, um, what, what actually goes first? 
first uh, you, all you'll have is, is the blower start up mm -hmm. and then the, the modulation will go through and that's called pre-purge. And what they want to do, they want so many air changes by code through the combustion chamber before we ever light off the gas valve. So that if something happened and the gas valve was leaking or there were gases left in that chamber after it shut down, this makes sure that all those gases are out. So when we light off, we know we're only lighting off what we're putting in there, not residual gas that was left from the previous firing. Okay, makes sense. Okay, and then the back in the back here. Now this into is, the boiler. Yeah, this is where it all, all mixes together. You see all these ports here. This is where all the natural gas comes out. Um, and then if it was oil fired, you'd have a, a little nozzle right there in the center where the oil would be spraying out into that air. Mm. This is the diffuser and what it's designed for is to spin that air to make it cut through that natural gas so you get good combustion. And then this cone here shapes the flame so that you don't have the, the, the gas or the, the flame just going out against the walls of the boiler mm -hmm. or whatever the combustion chamber is so we can hold that in and control the, the, the way that flame is designed. And uh, refractory, where is that? Go here. That that is all right here, yep. and it's it's according to how you know what the boiler is designing. You know the new water tube boilers. This is all uh, water wall, so we have a real small refractory ring um, in a fire tube. You know if your Morrison tube is you know this big around, then the entire front of this is all going to be refractory, and it will be shaped like this is coming out at an angle, and that's that's all specified by the burner manufacturer. Perfect. <clears throat> Well, appreciate the uh, information, uh, just some real basic information about basic. really how a force draft burner works. Yep. And uh, appreciate you hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. I appreciate Stephen hanging out with us today, talking a little bit about the Power Flame burner. Again, we're so appreciative of Power Flame as they have graciously given us uh, this burner and actually some others in the, in the Boiler University for our training. We also rep Power Flame and we've had a long-standing relationship with these guys for many years. We put these on our rental boilers, um, so we do have a good relationship with them. I do want to give a shout out to Bill Wiener as he is uh, retiring, an icon in the business. Uh, Bill was the owner of Power Flame for many, many years and he has been so good to us as a company and just want to wish him a happy retirement. Thanks for all you do, Bill. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.